Hi everyone, my name is Robert Abley. Oh. Welcome, Vera Gemma, the star oh. of Vera. <laughs> and, and the filmmakers, Tiza Kobe and Rainer Firmel. So, so how do you three come together? Vera, how did you come across these filmmakers, and what was this? What was the genesis of this project? Well, the genesis. Uh, do you hear me? Yes. So the genesis of this uh, project was that was about the topic about prejudice. What is the first impression about people? And that's, uh, the, the fact is that when we saw Vera Gemma for the first time, we had a lot of prejudice about her, just because she likes to uh, dress in this beautiful way, because she's a little different and everything. And just after, the, uh, but only afterwards when we met her two weeks afterwards the f that we have seen her the first time, and we could talk to her, we noticed that all the prejudice we had were completely false. So this was the idea also about, uh, prejudice is a very important topic in this, in this movie. That's th this I, I want the spectator to do the same travel as I did. Mm -hmm. First to say, who is this and what is she doing? And, and then at the end of the film, maybe to get so close to her that you see that she's completely different from what you imagine. Vera, what do you remember about meeting um, Tiza and Rainer? Well, I remember that uh, we have been friends for a long time okay. before thinking, uh, even thinking to this movie. And Tiza used to come uh, uh, in Rome, uh, in my place, uh, uh, many times asking me a lot about my life, uh, you know? She was very interested. And then one day she told me, you know, Vera, we are writing a movie about you. <laughs> uh, and the first reaction was, uh, Tiza, I don't have any money for this movie. <laughs> and she told me, Vera, we don't want money from you. We're going to pay you for your work. Uh, I was like, oh, really? Hmm, interesting. <laughs> but uh, the first thought was, uh, they probably want me to pay something, <laughs> uh, you know? Imagine the, the, the level of uh, self-esteem uh, that I had uh, in uh, this moment. Now it's going a little bit uh, better. You were worried they were going to be like Gennaro, your boyfriend in the movie, right? Exactly. <laughs> that, that was my, my real life. Uh, I mean, uh, they took inspiration from my real life. So I would, li I would like now to tell you that uh, never a boyfriend uh, took revenge from me. But we could make a Netflix uh, series about uh, the boyfriend, uh, that, uh, <laughs> the wrong boyfriend that I had. This is just a, a small part. But you know, I think uh, that when uh, your heart is good uh, and you really believe uh, in people, you will always find a way to stand up. I agree. Uh, that's wonderful. Uh, Tiza, Rainer, when you uh, gar 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 are going to come to Vera with this idea, what are you worried about? How do you think the pitch is going to go? Well, we wrote a very, very uh, strict script. Even we wrote a dialogue, but most of most of the dialogues, a lot of dialogues, are improvised. Um, but but still, we had the script, and I told um, no actors or protagonists of our movies will ever see the script. But what we do is to sit together and to tell them scene by scene what is going to happen. And for me, for us, it was essential that she would be, she would give us her okay because it's so much in spirit. Um, uh, it's so much about her life that she could have said, no, I don't want to do this or I don't want to say this. Because uh, uh, for that, it was very important that we talked about every scene. Rainer, can you give the audience a sense of uh, you and Tiza make movies that are, the, are, are typically combinations of real lives and, and made up things? Can you talk about the background of, your fil of you as filmmakers in this style? Yes, so our back background is uh, documentary filmmaking and, and we, we are used to work in a very small team uh, that comes from uh, making documentaries, this way of uh, filmmaking. So Tiza does the sound, I do the camera and together we direct. So we have, in this movie we had one, sometimes one assistant, but usually we work just in two. And, and this gives us the, the possibility to create very intimate moments and give the actors uh, the, the, the possibility to show really intimate moments also. And 
Yes, we like this way between fiction and documentary because we don't uh, distinguish so much. For us, it's filmmaking, film is film. And since the beginning of filmmaking, uh, since the Brothers Lumiere, it was not really clear, is it reality or is it fiction? So this is what fascinates us about filmmaking. And maybe I can add, we always shoot on Super 16 because we think Super 16 is a material that we, li we love a lot because we studied photography, but also it looks to the um, soul of a person, it, it seems to us. And second thing that maybe is strange is that we write for our protagonists. So we know them all before, and then we write for them. So uh, to be really close to their, to their lives. So Vera, how long had you known Tizza? And, uh, just I oh want just to say one thing more. What I'll pass a lot uh, is even uh, to shoot uh, chrono chronologically. So the, the first time the kids see me is really the very first time that he saw me. So he's surprised for real. He's, he think of what is who is this lady with this cowboy hat, you know? And then going on with the movie, he learned to love me, and I, I learned to love him for real. So at this point, uh, Tizza didn't have to say to the kids, now show me how you love Vera, because he was loving me for real. So this shooting chronologically helps uh, help us a lot to give something very uh, honest to the public. Had you ever shot a movie in that way before, or? Which no, but no, nobody wants me for a movie before this one. Uh, so, <laughs> it's I not true <laughs> completely. That's <laughs> exaggerated. <laughs> yeah, but I'm always exaggerated. Uh, you know, I'm always too much. That's why people judge me when they see me. Uh, that's why Tizza too. You know, because there is the idea that a woman uh, have to be a little bit less of what she really are. To doesn't scare people uh, because uh, otherwise, if sh she dresses in a certain way, maybe she's not intellectual enough, uh, maybe she's not intelligent enough. Uh, I don't care about uh, this idea. I'm always too much. It, you sound like you're having the kind of conversation with us right now that probably inspired Tiza and Rainer to make this movie. I'm, I'm assuming. Is that is that true? <laughs> I think even a certain uh, loneliness and sadness uh, that belongs uh, to me. You know. Yes, and this, it was prejudice and it was judgment and also this being, uh, um, always um, uh, being the daughter of someone, not that you know, don't have the right, that uh, at every party I was with her, they told her, ah, have you seen the daughter of Giuliano Gemma is here? He had not even the name. So this was so some, uh, we have very simple fathers and mothers, something we didn't know what this means. So this was very interesting for us, us to explore also, what does this mean to be the daughter uh, of someone very famous? Yes, uh, but in a way it's also a, a universal theme because every Everyone wants to uh, uh, be good for their parents, to be something. To this, everyone sees his or her parents as a as a role model in a mm -hmm. way. And maybe for it's even much more harder for. Uh, for yeah, for me, I've been very difficult because my father was the perfect hero of a spaghetti western movie. He was handsome, really one of the most beautiful man of Italian cinema. And all my life, uh, they made this uh, cruel uh, comparison between me and him, like the father is so beautiful. The daughter, she's not beautiful uh, like him, uh, you know. Or are you Giuliano Gemma daughter? You don't look like him, uh, you know. And I was in love with my father. I was an adolescent that wanted to look like his father, you know. So I never felt beautiful enough. I never felt enough uh, in this life uh, because of this uh, hero that I had in uh, my house. But the problem wasn't between me and my father because he, he, he was trying once in a while to tell me that I was special, you know. But uh, this uh, cruelty of uh, people uh, didn't help me a lot to have uh, um, a self-esteem and a good idea of about myself and um, my kind of uh, strange, different beauty, not classical at all. 
Yes, and we're talking a lot about giving uh, new opportunities to new actresses or actors to have new faces in cinema, to change cinema a little bit. And then there is never a place for a woman like Vera, who is very gif really gifted, a really, really good actor, but she's not the norm, let's say. She's not like everybody else. So it's very difficult to find roles for her. So this was for us also very important that finally we give the chance to someone who doesn't get the chance but is really gifted. But uh, sorry, if I men may mention here that that someone uh, believed in you. That that maybe you can mention that oh. because because you, you cannot say that that nobody wanted to make a no, movie no, with you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. G thank you to give me this opportunity yeah. to say. Um, Sergio Leone, this great, incredible Italian director that he, I imagine you all know, was a big friend uh, of my father and he was convinced that my father used to bring good luck. So my father was uh, always with him when he went here to sign uh, the contract for Once Upon a Time in America because he wanted my father to be with him because they never worked together. And he's uh, the one of the only human being that used to watch me all the time in a moment in which I wasn't uh, so interesting for uh, the world because they was all uh, very interesting to, to my father. And he used always to watch me and ask me if I were okay and make me question. And one day he told me, you know that I think that you are really special and uh, you are going to be in my new movie. I have a beautiful character for you. And uh, two months after, he died. And I cried so much, but not because of the movie. I didn't care, you know, because uh, someone that uh, understood me and makes me feel so special wasn't uh, there no more. So when you see the script, are you thinking, how are you thinking you're going to act yourself? I didn't know it because... Um, it's difficult, you know, to think how you will act yourself. What I can tell is that there is this wrong idea that playing the character of, of yourself, it's easy. It's not at all. Because immediately you want to give the best idea of yourself. You want to appear better of what you really are. This is automatically, uh, is almost inconscient. And uh, you want to show that you are a good actress. Uh, and uh, you have to be completely free from all these things. You have to be naked in your soul, upset yourself, forgive yourself one time forever, and uh, give uh, all your honesty, your truth, your pain, everything you have, uh, without thinking uh, to convince no one. And it's painful uh, because uh, you have to touch something very deep inside you and live again things that you, r you really li live. Some scene we make it uh, 12 times, for example, and they choose the very first one because the very first one was that one in which I was living again uh, the trauma, you know? Then from the second one, I start to act, uh, to mm. try to be better. So maybe the other was even better, but uh, the very first one was the most honest. Yes, Vera is talking about the last scene where she wakes up and she uh, she has been giving some um, um, something to sleep and she wakes up and the uh, apartment is empty. This is something that really happens to her. So we m put her in a situation where she had to recall her emo emotional memory and she had to go through a trauma again. I'm wondering if you thought about the, the, the legacy of Italian neorealism when you're making a movie like this, maybe the rest of your movies too. Does that come into play? Yes, this, this period of cinema is obviously some, uh, some period that influenced, influenced us uh, very much and we love Italian cinema. Not only neorealism, also later movies, also movies of Pasolini, Fellini obviously, and 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 what we also love are Italian people. We think that they are so great uh, in front of the camera, and they can improvise, and and they are very, very friendly, and and we love to be in in Italy. Yes. So is the rest of the cast a combination of actors and real people? 
No, they are all real people, uh, uh, but, uh, but not Asia Argento. Asia Argento is uh, an actress, uh, but in real life, she's the best friend of Vera. So all, all also in this role, she she uh, was not acting, but just being. Mm -hmm. So this is for us as directors very, very beautiful to see it, uh, that uh, people don't change before the camera. This is very important if you have want to have this documentary approach. And I think they all did. Also the grandmother, she was the first time um, for before the camera, or Daniel, or the boy. This was all the first time for them. Yeah, but just uh, the approach is documentary, you know? Because uh, then the scene, a real scene, uh, with the they, they knew very well what they wanted, uh, you know? So um, we act, we play a character. And I play the character uh, of myself, uh, and to play the character of myself, uh, I had to be free from myself. Yes, but all all the characters are real, so it's the real agent of of Vera. It's her real sister. The only maybe it's it's not her real uh, driver, but Walter is also a very for us uh, who who plays the driver of of Vera. We already did one movie before with him, and we we appreciate his his um, really. He's a very strong character and had a very hard life, and this is something we wanted also to to yes to show also in this scene where he's talking about hi this knife. This is something that really happened to him, and and we once shot a movie with him that that was screened in Locarno. It's quite a, a great festival. It in in Europe, and there he won f uh, best actor for this for this uh, for his uh, role. So this is something that we think that people who act as themselves, this is something that is not so easy. That is really something very very uh, uh, hard work also. And by the way, Vera won best actress at the Venice Film Festival a year ago for when this premiered, and 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 Rainer and Tizza won best directors. So, Vera, what was it like to act with your sister? Oh. <laughs> when Tizza and Rainer call um, Juliana, my sister, to play the character of my sister, she answered, I hate cinema and I'm fat, so I won't do it. Oh my God! They go, no, Juliana, come on, you are not fat. Uh, you are beautiful, and you have to play the character of my sister because uh, it's you, my sister. Uh, she went, okay, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> so <laughs> we started the scene. Tizza told her, I don't know what you told her. I think you told her, talk with your sister honestly. Tell her what you think about her. Uh, no, she, she, you, she, you, she, you are asking her money, and so I, I, we already knew what will come if you ask her money. No, it was this exactly. So I make this scene asking her for money, asking to sell this parking. She start this monologue. You, the money that you spend, the cafe floor, Paris, the boyfriend that steal your money, the trip to Marrakesh. She was an, an amazing actress, and I, and I wasn't ready to all these uh, critics, you know. And I couldn't believe it. Uh, they go, oh, you didn't want to make the movie, but uh, you are doing well. <laughs> uh. Well, I, I mean, again, it kind of like makes you wonder, so what's real and what's not? In the in a scene like that, I mean, do you yeah, have the, the scene like that was completely uh, real because the parking is no there no more, okay. so <laughs> we sailed the parking, um, and even uh, our attitude uh, protective uh, uh, with me, you know, telling me ev almost every day. Uh, talking about uh, the mistakes uh, that I made maybe 20 years ago, you know. Uh, we have this uh, relationship in which uh, she's the one that uh, has a real life and she makes sacrifice. Uh, and me, I'm that one, the artist, uh, you know. And, and she, she said all the time, you know, Vera, I have a real life. And, and I w you can't imagine how real is mine <laughs> and how I fight to, to arrive until here. But she doesn't believe it. I think with that, probably, let's go to like uh, some questions. You, you, people must have questions in the audience. Um, the question is how long it took to film. 
We 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 had 45 days, right now, more or less. But it was a problem that that all filmmakers had in this time that there was Corona. So we were between two lockdowns, and 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 we were so afraid that the second lockdown would come that we had to shoot without any pause, without break. So we had just Sunday free, and this was very 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 hard for Vera because she's in every scene. The last day we shoot. Uh, I feel ashamed to say this, uh, but I said to Tiza, Tiza, please promise me, promise me that it's finished. <laughs> that is the last day. So and she was like, I promise you, Vera, don't worry. Because we don't have worry. written a, a slightly a different ending, but we never shot it. <laughs> so there's a chance you might not have known what the real ending was? But we were tired also, and we found uh, for ma for me the important for us the important thing is that we have a woman that doesn't give up. She goes out and she goes on. So sh she will go on believing in human beings, and that was uh, the the sense of the ending. Which is yeah, which very much comes through. Um, any anybody else? I something. So after all the years, you struggled between basically. Uh, under the shadow of your father and maybe you wanted to be an actress but you couldn't find the right path and suddenly it's happened. So how do you feel now? <laughs> You know, I always found a way to be an artist, uh, you know. I wasn't waiting uh, for the permission of Italian director, obviously, because they wasn't calling me. So I did uh, any kind of artistic thing. Uh, I worked at in the circus, uh, I wrote a book, uh, I directed a documentary uh, about my father. I did lots of things, but obviously I knew that uh, I had something to tell uh, as actress. You know, maybe I wasn't sure no more. You know, because after doors and doors in the in, in the face, I wasn't 100% sure. But I knew that in some way, one day, I will have my opportunity. And I never stopped to believe it, uh, and I never give up uh, being an artist anyway. Then, when they give me this opportunity, obviously, uh, I try to give uh, all myself. I understood that maybe he could be the last one, so I I. It was a question of life or death. I had to be good because it was my opportunity and I learned in this life to doesn't waste opportunity and to be very grateful to people that believes in me. And do you feel good now? Very good. <laughs> You're good. That's great. Uh, there was a question over here. Um, I was wondering about the scene in the, in the cemetery. Is that based on a real conversation or a real event? It's the scene in the cemetery. He's asking if it's based on a real conversation uh, she had with Ozia, maybe? No, no. This was just we knew this tomb of, of the son of Goethe, and we were always very touched by this tomb. And, and but we knew it for a long, long time. We loved this cemetery. So the, in this movie, we knew it has to play a role. And, and, and we wrote this scene for Asia and Vera. But I, we would be very bad directors if we would go there and say, now say our lines. That would be stupid. So just we put them in front of the tomb and said, now talk about it. How do you feel uh, and about uh, this? We felt uh, this uh, real solidarity for this poor guy that didn't have the right not even to have his name uh, one time death, you know. So we started to talk uh, and it was very real. It, it was really from the deep of, of the art. And um, and this is another scene uh, improvised, but uh, it's exactly what she wanted, you know. And the intelligence to put me in Asia, that we are two daughters of a popular popular uh, people, in front of this tomb, uh, have been uh, so creative and amazing from Tiz and Reiner, you know. Because at uh, this point, uh, what we could say. That that was the only thing we could say. I, I know. P please help me. I don't want to be Giuliano Gemma daughter even when I'm I'm deaf, you know. And uh, she said, "Yeah, but you have to help yourself, you know." And everything came so naturally. But this was so sweet when Vera won Best Actress in Venice. She went uh, uh, to take the prize, and 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 it was her moment. And what did she do? She thanked her father. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, because I, at this moment, uh, obviously, I, I, I would love that my father would be there, you know. I, I lost my mother very young, then I lost my father. Finally, I have some success. 
I go in Venice and I'm lonely. You know, so I said, okay, I have two angels, at least I have to dedicate this important award to my father, uh, to the most beautiful man in the world, I said. That, that, that sounds like a wonderfully honest uh, thing to, to say and, and do. Um. So, um, this is the third film I've seen of the new two other ones. Today. Really? Wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We met during La Pivoline, Le Pivoline. This is a fantastic thing that happened. And I'm curious, it's a simple question. Do you know her because of following the circus and that she was in the circus or that's just a coincidence? This is the coincidence, a complete coincidence, because when her father died of the car accident, she decided to make a second film f for her father. And as he was not doing just spaghetti western, but a lot of, uh, and he was in love with circus, she went to the circus. And we met her there as a director. I, I remember she was standing behind. There was a cameraman and a sound man, a man or woman. And she was directing this, uh, what was, would become a documentary about circus life in honor of her father. So that's what we we saw each other. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I couldn't see my <laughs> um, You know, that was lovely. Congratulations to your beautiful and, and to the directors and writers. Fabulous. My question is this, and I believed you in every scene, so you played yourself so well. <laughs> what? Give us a couple of American actresses um, who who are uh, doing roles that you feel you could play? Asking about American actors that yeah, yeah, that I understand. Yeah. I was uh, I, I wasn't Just ready for the, for the question because I'm in love of lots of American actresses, yeah. but I never thought that maybe. I could play this character because I can be good in this character. It's just because I want to, you know? Yeah. Obviously, I would love to be in all the Quentin Tarantino movie. I would love to be um Uma Thurman sometimes. Other times, I would love to be Julia Moore, which is my favorite actress, you know? But um, I'm not too good to understand what kind of actress and in which kind of character I can be. In this way, I'm very actress, you know, and I need a director to believe in what I can do. Then uh, I will do Are everything I can to Are be good. Uh, I'm attracted to extreme roles, extreme character, because I'm extreme too, you know? But at the same time, uh, I think that I have this comic side. Uh, I would love to be a sex symbol, but everybody <laughs> laughs when I talk, <laughs> even <laughs> when I don't want nobody to laugh. Sometimes even when I'm sad, they, oh my God, you're so comic. So I think that a, a comedy, could be the right thing for me, but with the sad side, because I always like uh, irony and comedy when they comes from the pain. I think that you have to know the pain to be funny. Well, I, uh, I think that's a great idea for you to keep to pursue that. And I think I want to end by asking you, Vera, if you feel like after playing yourself, whether you know yourself better. Yes, but I'm not a better person. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it have it have been it it have not been therapeutic. Okay. Uh, I know very well myself. I am very lucid concerning myself, but I'm ready to make again a lot of mistake because I love to believe in human beings. So acting is not therapy. Absolutely okay. not in my case. Uh, maybe <laughs> other actresses found themselves playing themselves. No, I'm uh, um, obviously I'm a little bit more smart. I mean, no, 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 no I, I, it doesn't make me sleep every day and steal all my thing in my house. This is difficult. That could happen again. You know, I'm, I, I play more attention. But concerning uh, the belief, I'm always ready to to give an opportunity to people. Then if uh, if uh, it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I will always find a way, as I told you before, to stand up because uh, I'm a good person. Well, all I can say is uh, thank you for bringing your vulnerability and talent to this role and thank you for giving this role to her to give, create thank this you. wonderful film. Thank you. Thank you all for coming to see it. Thank you very much.